This is, this is great news because, ladies and gentlemen, six to the building. Let's go. Oh, man. Let's go. We appreciate you guys joining, man. Uh, if you uh, if you could do me a favor and kindly introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment, and uh, plug and promote anything and everything. Oh man. Uh, well, we're banned called Six Acre Earth. From we're gonna we're gonna say Portland because nobody no like if we say Hillsboro, people are gonna be like, where the fuck is that? <laughs> but uh, we're we're from Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm Ben. I sing. Um, and I'm Tyler, and I play guitar. Hell yeah! We're two thirds of Six Acre. <laughs> how did you How did you guys come up with the band name, and what does it mean? Man, you want? I was you I was wondering that? if you were gonna ask that question. Um, so. It's actually funny because the person that came up with that name is um is uh, my brother Spencer. He plays the bass, and he was the one. I think we kind of had like, because you know every band goes through that like process where they're like, all right, we need a name now. And so he had like a list of ideas, and I think this one was for technically it's like he was watching a YouTube video about um if you've ever heard of like the Kowloon Walled City, and um. It's like basically it, it was like I think it was in um where was it? It was in I, I don't I don't I don't I think it was in Hong Kong, but anyway, it was this it was like this um this like city basically that was like instead of building like left to right, they built straight up. So it was basically like this like really it was like the when it was around, it was like the highly the most highly populated area like on the planet or whatever, and it was like they call, I think in the video, he called it a six acre world is what it was. Cause there was like, you know, businesses in there, people like a whole apartment buildings that were in there. There was people like opening doctor's offices and like dentists that were like, not technically like actual practices, but they were, it was just all within this like little six acre bubble. And that was, I think kind of where we got the the idea from. We thought it sounded cool. Hi, awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, my, my co-host today is uh, Encircled Throne. We call him Mojo right there. Uh, before we get started, Mojo, the fellas in Six Acre Earth, now you guys are friends. Mojo, do you have a, a, a question before we kind of like deep dive? I do. It's about the videos. How much fun was making Bon Voyage with all the shredded paper everywhere and the second part to it, which was a bigger mess, it or Too Late? <laughs> oh man, they're both like pretty messy, but with Too Late, at least the string was like attached. So we all just kind of... <laughs> It was attached to every, it was all just like it was just yarn right yeah. um but with too late uh, with all that paper and then the tear down there was a lot of sweeping um yeah. they're both very very fun i would say too late my favorite part or uh, sorry uh, bon voyage my favorite part about that music video is we had a bunch of pictures from old like warp tour magazines right yeah they were all like it was like we got this stack of um, it was like alt press magazines and it was like a, like a special, it was like all the magazines were like featuring, it was just like warp tour era artists, I guess. And so we like basically just like yeah. went through and like, we weren't, we had we had these for years and they were, they weren't like the old vintage original ones. It was like, yeah, they like were all like, re, like reprints. So it was like, yeah. it, it was, it was okay to rip them up. Right. So we just took all of the, the ones like of like the artists that we liked and we kind of hung yeah. them up in the background. And like, if you watch like really closely, you can kind of like. And maybe pause the video. You can yeah. probably see some nice of them little in there. Easter eggs like Paramore and Beartooth and uh, like big monster logos. And, yeah, and, and like uh, uh, Attack Attack. Attack, was in Attack. There. Were yeah. you guys were you guys big on on Warp Tour back in the day when it existed? Was that something you yeah, always I, go to every year? Yeah, we were big uh, Warp Tour um, fanatics. I guess. Fanatics. Yeah, like the, la <laughs> the last couple years where it was. Um, Me too. By the way, not like. There was like the final warp tour where they only had like two or three shows, but like all the ones leading up to that, we would try to go to like a couple. So like when they had the the Portland date, we would like go to the Portland one and then we'd go to the Seattle one. And then like when they stopped doing that and they only had California, we would go to like Pomona and then we'd go to San Diego and we would just fly because we had friends that lived out there. So we would we would do that. We just try to hit up like because there's really nothing else, nothing else like warp tour where you can get to see all these artists 
for like how much money it costs and it was yeah, like, like it was really great 30 bucks a ticket or something like that it was it was totally it was like it, i felt like it was like 100 bands for like 30 40 bucks tops and then yeah. and yeah. then you got free water as, as sometimes you got like free monster water or free monsters yeah. they had the skateboarding man i miss warp tour yeah i miss so Warped tour so much for real was it is it the same director for for voyage and too late um no bomb voyage was um zach olsen zach olsen and funny enough actually um the guy that did too late his name is ej olsen but they're not related they're not related they're not related though <laughs> each each of the music videos have been different producers or directors so far but we plan on going back to using the same ones is there a reason why you jump around is it is that also with the singles you go to a different producer also or just for the video no so with the singles it's all we've we use the same person just because he's absolutely amazing his name is justin abel and he produces all our songs and writes with us and he's absolutely incredible but the music video specifically it 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 really is based on like uh the availability of the of the person we're working with so when you say he writes with you justin does that mean like pre-production before like like writing the song from scratch style or or you've, um, we, you've brought a concept to him and he kind of twists it yeah we bring we bring demos to him okay cool hell yeah mm -hmm. uh did you fellas bring the hot sauce if i know always we throws have, is a curveball we, we have some hot sauce here egypt yeah. extra hot I'm what is like that i've never seen that one hot sauces. it's it's like this oh, ross man. pack of hot sauces that we got for christmas and we just got the hottest <laughs> one we could find okay cool well that's that's cool we'll get there um i do want to know if it if it gets hard for any reason balancing six acre earth and and days to waste or is that just the solo side project so when there's time you work on that or uh do you see yourself taking that on full time as well as the band so days to waste is exclusively my 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 side project uh, i've been doing that since 2014 uh and it's been just been kind of growing since then. It used to be like covers on YouTube. And then I started writing originals in 2016. And then I put out my first single in 2018. And so that's exclusively like me, um, my thing. It is, you know, I'd love to, to do music full time. Uh, that, that, uh, that's the dream. But um, I'd say both Six Acre Earth and Days Twice are equally as important to me. It's, you know, it's, it's just easier to make music by myself when i'm doing it myself and in my room you don't have to kind of uh, correlate with everyone and since since we do go to producer uh, we have to work with his time as well and uh it's definitely harder making six sick earth music but i'd say both are equally as like important uh, so it's not really difficult um maybe when it gets to like the promotional release side of things it is kind of difficult kind of uh juggling those two i guess but not really they're both very equally important to me and uh it's it's it is what it is i guess i don't know it has a very like say we can fly feel to me would yeah, you say that's I'm an inspiration actually, yeah i i'm actually really good friends with say we can fly uh i've been listening to him since i was fit like 15 and uh he produced or he he mixed and like co-produced my third song ever released oh cool and uh i have a feature with him called lovesick and yeah we talk to this day I love, I love Save the Fly. He's absolutely an influence. Awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, Bojo, go ahead and shoot another one. So I noticed with the singles, they're basically like a year apart almost. Is that intentional? Mm -hmm. Are y'all just like going to keep doing that? Oh man. So you like, is there a single coming out <laughs> this year? <laughs> well, so I would love to put music out faster. And like, I think as a, as a band are, we want to do that more. Like if we can get music out as fast as possible, that's our goal. I guess like the biggest thing has been like, um, you know, when we made these songs or we, when we recorded these songs, we're like really proud of this. And we're like, we want each song to basically be like the best it can be. And so that means like, you know, we want good artwork and we want an awesome video for it. And then we want to do all the, like all the promotion we can mm -hmm. And, um, so like that, you know, it just like everything costs money. So like the biggest thing has kind of just been like, when we get a song ready to, to put out, it's like, we're doing everything for that song. And like, everything is kind of focused on that one. And, um, I, I do in the future, I want to get songs out faster than, than once a year. Um, but that's just kind of like 
that's just the rate it's been mm -hmm. kind of recently. Yeah, and, and all of us work full time. So it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to work around that. And, um, uh, it, yeah, the hard truth is that making music and pr like releasing music, if you want to have good quality stuff, it's expensive. And, uh, we, we don't have a label. We're all out of pocket. We do this all ourselves. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, working around the, the work schedule and, uh, getting together the funds and, um, uh, well, kudos we love it to you guys for, for making it work, really, man. We really care yeah. about the quality of our, of our music. Yeah. I mean, it competes with, with some of the best artists of production wise, video quality wise that we, that we check out on a regular basis. So it's, I think you're doing it right for sure. That's excellent Thanks. stuff. I'm not hating that it takes a year. It's just. <laughs> we just want like more this. one is not enough we want more <laughs> uh so to do to, okay cool can when okay we'll, we'll roll off that when can we expect the next one the next single like have you already tracked it yes yeah we have yeah, okay. a couple that are already tracked still um one of them is for sure we have one that's going to come out in fall um ideally i would like to get another one out before that it just comes down to um if we can do it or not Mm -hmm. um so for sure fall maybe before then cool uh to do the trivia part which involves the hot sauce i need to know what movie or tv show if you guys could agree on one or the other a movie or a tv show that you've seen the most or if i ask you trivia on this movie or tv show it is impossible i stump you because you've seen it so many times talk amongst yourself come to a decision and we're gonna jam a little too late real quick all right, should we mute? Should we mute ourselves? It's your call. We'll hear it in the background, so maybe yeah. Break down on the sidewalk, listen, cause I can't feel my fingers. Yeah, I stay up when I should be sleeping, cause your memory lingers. By the way, I use two cameras and one of them is like going haywire right now. That's why I'm like robot-y. But uh, on RN, not everybody sees all that. This new PC couldn't come fast enough, Mojo. Did you guys uh, come to a decision on the movie or TV show? Uh, Star Wars, specifically like Clone Wars era, prequel era. Star Wars, Clone Wars, like the cartoon version? Yeah, or like just, just Star Wars, the prequel era in general. That's just you, like the era that we grew up with, yeah. I guess. So what if, if I did Attack of the Clones? Is that fair or no? Yeah, for sure. Attack of the Clones. That okay. sounds good. Hell yeah. Do you have any do you have any interesting vocal warm ups? I like to ask vocalists this, this particular question all the time. Like, do you have any interesting tricks that you do to achieve the higher register that you that you do on a regular basis? Um, so uh, I've found out or discovered that singing like later in the day is is like easier. Sorry. Uh, but um, warm ups, I would say. Uh, when I was in the studio with Justin, we would go in like the mornings and I would have tea and then he would do like warm ups with me. But uh, as far as warm ups go, I just sing a lot uh, before I record to get my vo voice from better. Maybe do some like belts. Um, is, is there like a particular song that's always in in the I, the iPods that are that are ear pods, whatever they're called, uh, that, um, that that you that you warm up to? Um, No. I just like I sometimes it's not even words. I'll just I'll just start like singing a, a random melody that's like high. Okay, who who made yeah. you who made you want to pick up a microphone in the first place? Like, let's go way back to when you were younger. Way like, back. what okay. artist so, like made you want to be make music in general? Wow. Okay, so we're gonna go way back to when I was eight years old, uh, listening to way back Reliant K and uh hawk nelson and uh those bands and uh i used when i was eight i used to like plug in like headphones and pretend i was in like a music video uh so i've i guess i've been all, like into music from like a very young age and uh 
the emo stuff came at like uh 13 years old like and i started on like black veil brides and uh woe is me uh wage war uh what's another of mice and men and like sleeping with sirens and pierce the veil and this stuff and i guess i've always been like attracted to like the higher register of vocal range and uh I think I started covering songs when I was 14, like late 14, early 15. Um, and I would just do acoustic. And then when I got my first microphone, I started doing like uh, vocal covers. And they're very terrible and they don't exist anymore. But, uh... <laughs> For sure. Would you say would you say Anthony Green is in that category too? I actually, surprisingly, I didn't grow up with Anthony Green or, or say us in. Okay, because yeah, really I wasn't expecting Hawk. Reliant K or Hawk Nelson. That is a little bit of a curveball. Yeah, uh, I grew that. That's that was the introduction to like rock music for me. Was those guys? Okay, cool. What, what was your first concert for both of you guys? My first concert was the Rock and Worship Road Show when I was eight, and it was like Mercy Me, Hawk Nelson, and like a few other uh, Christian rock bands, and that was my first concert, and it was cool. awesome. Hell yeah. Heck yeah. Um, my first concert was Switchfoot, actually, which is kind of funny that like both of us <laughs> yeah, are like Christian because we're not really re we're not really we're not religious. Really. Okay. But it's just like I don't know, maybe something about like those bands. I guess we must have just liked like yeah, like yeah, just like the sound of it. I guess that's cool. Well, let's do a little Star Wars trivia. <laughs> In Star Wars: Attack of the Clones. Who orders Zam Wessel to kill Padme after the failed assassination? Uh, Jango Fett. Jango Fett is correct! Well done. All right, boys, I got some blueberry hell hot sauce. You don't have to partake. And I also have to do a shoey. Are you familiar with what a shoey is? Is that drinking is a that beer drink? out of a shoe? <laughs> beer out of a shoe? In fact, it 100% is. But don't <laughs> worry, I have a retired shoe. The, the, the wheel is like torturous if I'm not able to stump you uh, or or chat when, when I, we don't have a guest on. So that's exactly what happened. Mojo, hit him with another question. I am going to be tortured right now with this blueberry hellfire hot sauce. And we're going to follow it up with a shoey. And uh, the show must go on, so. So are you guys playing any shows, or are you just strictly writing for the most part? Um. Well, so we, we played a lot of, we were playing a lot of shows before, like, pre-COVID and stuff. And right, kind of right when that happened is when we went into the studio for the first time. And so we've kind of um, been focusing a lot on, because we had, like, demo tracks out before that. And now we have, um, we so we kind of focused on getting more like high quality songs out there. So that people, like when they come to our shows, they have like, you know, more songs that they've, cause back then it was kind of like, you know, we had these three demo tracks, but nobody has, that's like half the set and nobody's really heard them before. So um, we really wanted to have like more good songs out for people to like listen to and know before they come to our show. And then, but at the same time, like if we get the opportunity to play a show, like we, that's the whole reason we want to do this, right? Because we want to we want to play shows and stuff. So like, if we get the opportunity, if it comes along, like we'll we're gonna jump on it. But for we've kind of been focusing on just getting songs out for a while. Cool. Has, has there ever been consideration to get like a major huge artist on like the single? Like, let's say hypothetically, you guys and Justin have the one. Too late seems like it could be the one. But if there was another one. Have you ever talked about having just like an ultra huge guest just to catapult to the sometimes sometimes people say it's like a quick hurdle to get, you know, recognized real fast, blah, blah, blah. Just just throw it out there if you've ever talked about having a feature or two. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, about, like, we would like to get features. Um, we up into this point, we've kind of like we were like, we kind of want our first couple of songs to be like. Um, I guess like on us, if that makes sense, like we want the, we want the, those ones to kind of be like, you know, we did this ourselves and then, but in the future, like, yeah, definitely. We would love to have like a, just a, this coolest feature 
on like on like our best like that'd be awesome i don't i don't know who it would be i think the obvious one is kellen quinn like yeah. we gotta get kellen on a song that's kind of uh it's kind of like a. I got his phone number on my phone i just text away just let me know when when you guys need him i got you oh hell yeah <laughs> um we, we also have thought about kind of uh venturing more into like my scene uh with like we thought it might be cool to have like gucci high waters on a song or lil lotus on a song okay Oh yeah, little is from uh, if I die first and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. If I die first. yeah, he's he's wicked cool. Um, that would be fun if if I like to ask this one too all the time to the guests. If hypothetically, all of a sudden, a label came along and and the deal looks like exactly what you want and it comes with a huge signing bonus and I'm just talking like millions of dollars signing bonus for each member of the band. You don't have to split it. You can't buy a house. You've already taken care of your Damn family it. and you can't buy more gear. Is there uh, is what? there is there one or two things you've always wanted, but now you just have so much money you can afford it? Oh man. Well, house was gonna be my answer. That's why I always <laughs> say it can't be a house. Can't be more gear. Man. I would man, I would say like I've always wanted a go-kart track. I think <laughs> Dude, that's that awesome. One. That's awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Specifically, like, in, because in the house. I want the go-kart track to be in the house. Because, mm -hmm. like, out here in Portland, it rains nine months out of the year, right? But I want to be able to race our go-karts year-round. So, you know, a go-kart track in the house. Yo, Man, what? You're, you're living in the year 3000, and I want in. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Like a, a Mario Kart themed. For real. I would never leave. I'm house. sleeping over every weekend, dude. That sounds <laughs> awesome. Hell yeah. Let's try one more Star Wars trivia because I'm gonna I'm really trying to stump you guys, but clearly you've seen this movie a couple times. Let's see. In Star Wars Attack of the Clones, three times in the movie, Obi-Wan calls out the number for his droid. What is his droid's number? Uh R4. Mother <laughs> That is yeah, correct. Hell yeah. Damn it, Mojo! <laughs> you have definitely seen Star Wars a couple of times for sure. I have to do another hot sauce. Would you guys prefer I suffer review straight wasabi or ghost pepper wing sauce? Ooh, I'm going to give you the wasabi. I'm sorry. The wasabi heard. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, is there, is there, let's say, let's say to roll off my earlier question uh, regarding the label, the signing, blah, blah, blah. Where is your dream country to play a show at? Oh, man. Um, what would yours be? Actually? Country? Yeah. Country. So let, let, let's say hypothetically also one day of, the, of, of a five day trip there is you're gigging for an hour, but then the rest of the time you get to tour this country. So. Oh, throw into like a place you want to visit also uh i feel like all of us have different answers but i've always wanted to go to europe and um the uk me too but mm -hmm. um man i was like because like i think about now like where are the two countries i want to go or like where are like the list of countries it's always like in, it's either japan or australia just because like so many of my favorite bands are from Australia, right? So it's like if I go, if we play in Australia, then maybe we can hang out with all the bands from there. And like the dudes point. from Mighty Car Mods are in Australia. <laughs> Dude, we think so alike. I, Those are my two answers and exactly the same reason of why you're explaining Australia because there's so <laughs> many damn good bands in Australia. That's a good reason. Very good reason. Mojo, what you got? Since you're big Star Wars fans, do you have the collectible stuff too, or are you just like strictly just like watching it? Oh, do we have the collectible stuff? Uh, we have a whole shelf <laughs> full of uh, a bunch of different. Yeah, I'll, I'll grab a couple. <laughs> we have... This is serious fans right here. Uh, growing up, I had my entire room like decorated. Here's a uh, here's <laughs> Jango Fett's <laughs> ship, uh, the Slave One, but like the blue version. And then, who, whose ship is this? I don't know whose ship. Obi-Wan ship. This is obi Wan Starfighter from uh, episode yeah. three. Is R4 in it? I think R4 might be in there too. Yeah, right? R4 is on top of it. Damn we it. Have, we have like, no wonder you knew that one. Damn it. Yeah, we also like um, like a lot of like the Star Wars Legos and stuff too. 
Nice. So, is there anything else you guys collect besides Star Wars? Um, like any just like odd like Funkos, horror horror autographs, like anything like that. We have a lot of little tiny knickknacks, I guess. Um, vinyls. Yeah, we have a lot we... of vinyls. Oh, yeah, I, I feel like just... it's like everyone says that, right? They're like, yeah. oh, "I'm a real vinyl." I got a new <laughs> vinyl player today. I swear to you, today oh, yeah. we got a new vinyl player because our other one was just the the speaker on it was just going bad. But um, yeah, I got one recently too because the the one I had before was like a Crosley, like the one with the speakers built in, and I was just sick of that being the sound that comes out of that record player, right? So I bought, I ended up buying like an Audio Technica. It wasn't super expensive, but it has Bluetooth in it, right? So I can connect it to like the sound bar. And now the now the records have like actual good speakers that come out of instead of like the two little cheap ones on the side of the box. Nice. I'm rolling with the cheap ones right now, but <laughs> uh, if <laughs> if hypothetically it is time to do that big that big uh, show that we were talking about earlier, let's say it happens to be a festival and the show goes great. There's no there's no hiccups whatsoever. What is the go to munchy meal to celebrate? Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, we so we we both like um, they're like dumplings basically, but they got like they're like soup dumplings and yeah, they're, um, called, they're called Xiaolong Bao. Yeah, yeah, and I've never had that. Yeah, it's it's this place. I don't know if it's a chain around America. It's called Den Tai Fung, and we go there to celebrate things like hey, we it's a birthday or like a yeah, special right. event that we're gonna go to Den Tai Fung, but it's a dumpling place. Oh so, yeah. Dumplings. I have to try it. I have to try it. Uh, okay. Has anyone ever said you somewhat look like? I get people always tell me I look like Edward Norton, which I don't know if that's a diss or a comment. But uh, <laughs> has anyone ever said you slightly look like Corey Haim? Uh, which one of us? Both of us, or no? Uh, the uh, Ty Tyler, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, what did you say, Corey Haynes? Corey Haim. You know the two Corys? Uh, here, let me, let me see a picture. Corey Hain, H-A-N-E. It's, it's, you know, you I've know Cor that personally. Corey Feldman I, and Corey Haim, but. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, maybe a little bit. You see, like, I'm used to hearing, because um, cause Spencer, the guy that plays bass, he's my twin brother, right? So, like, I'm just used to hearing Spencer. You look like Spencer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh. Him and his brother are twins. You should actually look up. This is pretty funny. Like, if you look up a picture of Spock from when he was a teenager, <laughs> apparently he looks just like me. Yeah, uh, Tyler looks like young Spock. Too. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Are you guys also Star Trek fans or strictly to Star Wars? Um, No, we don't really been. I don't know where we found that picture. I think it was like uh, maybe Spencer found it or something like like years ago. And he, it, it was somebody's. It might even still be my contact picture in his phone right now. If you, if I called, it might come up as teenage Spock. But. Were you guys in previous bands before Six Acre Earth, or is this like your first full time on project? Uh, well, so we like me and my brother, we have been like kind of we started playing like instruments, I guess, when we were like in like late middle school and all like through high school, we had bands like together. And I always just kind of considered it all being the same band and we would just like um, we, we had like different singers in the past and it never, you know, things never really like worked out with them, I guess. And then so when we met Ben, that was the first like um, this is like the first I'm going to say like core group of guys that we've been like, all right, we all want to take this seriously and see how far how far we can go with this. And so we've been playing for a while, but like, this is our first like real like band that we've all taken seriously, I guess. Oh, yeah. But between. Between now and December, I know you talked about a single in the fall, possibly a second one, but let's let's say those those are those do come out. What would you guys like to achieve between now and December before New Year's, just as band goals? Man, um, um, I'm gonna say, um, obviously, another song, another music video. That is that is what we have. Um. Like that's our goal. Uh, we, we kind of. I don't. I don't know. What, I was gonna say like say? like I want to start playing shows again. So like if we could get, um, you know, back into the loop of or not the loop, but like back into the, 
you know, playing shows and putting music out. That would be, that would be my goal. I think by December. Hell yeah. I got one final question, but I'm going to let Encircled get one more in. Mojo. You think I'll be able to tour at all? Or is it just going to strictly be your, your area stuff? Um, I would love to tour. I think that would be like, especially with like, you know, we work full time. So um, it would have to be like. Do you, before you say, work, before right? you say, does, does you, do you anticipate your job allowing time off like could you say hey you know you guys already know about the music stuff some things are happening can i have these three weeks off are they cool with that and can you return or is it if you leave that's it you can't come back no they would be um they'd be willing to give us the three weeks off they've always been pretty cool with like uh with us being doing music we actually like played back when the <laughs> the president of the company that we work for um she moved to a different company like less than a year ago, but back before she moved, she was actually like one of our biggest fans. <laughs> and we like, oh, wow. we played, yeah, it was really, so she was really nice. And then we played at, I guess when she became the president, like a lot of, she like interviewed a lot of the employees that worked there and a lot of them said they played music. And so they were, she was like, let's have a concert at work. So, you know, we, we ended yeah. up playing at our work one time. And um, so she, yeah, they would definitely, and we get like paid time off and stuff that you accumulate every every pay period or whatever. I'm, I'm sure that even if it was like a long tour, let's say it was like, like, a, like maybe like two months, I'm sure they would be okay with like me just using all of my paid time off. And then like that, whatever that chunk at the end was, they would probably be fine with me just like not getting paid for that chunk. And I would be fine with that. So, and then I'd be for sure allowed to come back. And then you, you think the same with your job as well? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I've, uh, I, th I feel very fortunate to, work somewhere where the people I work with are very supportive of what I do and oh, they yeah. understand that my goal is is not there it's it's with it's with music and I think uh where he works would you say the same yeah I think like they used to be like you know one of these days you're gonna have to quit and I'm like I don't know about anytime <laughs> soon but yeah it's coming it's coming yeah is it does it I, I have a bonus question does it surprise you that too late is so popular uh, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I'm going to say yes too. It's like because if compared to like the ones we put out before Too Late, um, like we, I mean, like I, it's like I think Too Late, Too Late's like my favorite song, right? Because it's it's like such a banger, I guess, and like I'm really proud of it. But like, I'm I'm very surprised at how considering we basically had no anything before that, right? That was like the first song that we, the first like real song that we put out and. Yeah, I'm definitely surprised. Yeah, it was just the whole process of of all right, we're 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 gonna start making music now. You know, we're gonna start going to the studio, releasing, you know, putting out quality, quality content, and just the fact that the first one was so was so successful and everyone responded to it so well. It just it just it's so motivating to like all right, this is definitely what we're what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, I don't think any of us expected it to do as well as it did, but. I'm very grateful. Probably hit that milli before the year's over, fellas. That's that's worth going back for uh, for them dumplings. I would say. <laughs> yeah, I Hell yeah! We went back to, that idea in our heads. Let's yeah, go. we went back to the studio with Justin to. I don't even remember what it was for. It might have been for for Bomb Voyage, but I remember we came in to talk. We were like, "Hey, man, check it out! It's at ten thousand streams," and we were like super stoked on that. Yeah. And now I'm just like, oh my god, like. It's it's crazy. A couple yeah, years ago, we were like, you know, we were gonna, we had this whole puzzle. We spent like two weeks oh, putting man. this fucking puzzle together of our album art. Yeah, like my uh, mom got it for me for Christmas. It's like, um, it's literally just a puzzle of the album art for too art, late. Yeah. And we put it up. So we put it all together, and then we put a camera above it, and then we took a video of us taking it apart, and then we were gonna reverse it so that it was just like boom, really fast, put it yeah. all together, and it was gonna be like, um. A post for like thanks for ten thousand streams. It was a hundred. Or was it a hundred thousand so, streams? Uh, was it fifty thousand? I don't remember, but um, because it took so long to put the puzzle together. Yeah, but it literally took so long to put the puzzle together that we missed the mark. Like it hit a hundred thousand before we could make the. How the many video. pieces was it? Oh, oh man, oh, I man. don't. It's like, <laughs> like a, it's like a ten thousand piece puzzle. It's not that it's many not pieces. That many. It's just a lot of the pieces like look the same. It was because the the art's black. So, yeah, so uh, it, was, it was like it was just really and like I don't know we didn't we don't do a lot of puzzles, <laughs> so maybe you know we don't know the technique the how to do it faster. 
for sure. But that's that. Maybe you could. So you never put that the puzzle out. No, we still no. have. We still uh, have it. Maybe a million. Maybe, yeah, there, maybe there's your million. there's your milli idea. Hell okay. yeah! See you at the dumpling place. <laughs> at the dumpling place, filmed live in reverse. <laughs> Final question for you guys, and I really appreciate your time, man. We're we're big fans. Uh, Ghost Killer Entertainment actually showed us your guys' music uh, like a month and a half ago, and I fell in love ever since. But um, I, my final question is, is there any piece of advice that you could give other local bands that are striving to have a song be so, so successful? Is there is there a playlist route? Is there some kind of cheat code you use to get so many streams like what what avenue did you go that you can share for promotion help uh do not be scared to advertise yourself i feel like a lot of local bands are like oh i don't want to pay for ads or push it in everyone's face or like take the tiktok route or pay for playlisting you're like doing all that stuff but that's just the world we live in nowadays i i, I i've seen too many local bands who are like band camp exclusives you know, they don't want to upload to streaming services and like that stuff. But if you want to be successful and if you want to grow and really put your music out there, you got to, you, in, in a way, you got, you got to play the, the, the game. And that is to advertise your music as much as possible in every essence of media. I think that's great advice. Well, fellas, I really appreciate your time. Oh, 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 oh. oh Mojo, what you got? One of the viewers in chat just said they're coming through y'all's area in August and sent y'all a Facebook message and wants y'all to play. Okay. Hell yeah, dude. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll check it out. You put them on the spot right there, but we'll see. We'll see if they can, they can, <laughs> uh, they can whip up something for them. Hell yeah. Well, Ben and Tyler, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for, for ch chilling today, hanging. Uh, we look forward to the one, possibly two new singles coming out. And uh, hopefully, if you do make it on the road, please stay safe. Please come to California so I can catch a gig. That'd be awesome. And uh, you're welcome back anytime, man. This is fun. You guys have clearly a also seen Star Wars many a time. So I was not <laughs> able to stump you. Disappointed in that. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are watching, please support Six Acre Earth. Hit the follow button. Support up Six Acre Earth! Yeah, hell yeah! Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too.